I'm Marissa Blackwood, and if you've seen Peter Jackson's 1994 film Heavenly Creatures, starring Kate Winslet and Melanie Linsky, then you may have already heard of this case. For today, dear friends, we'll be discussing Heavenly Creatures Inspiration, the true story of Parker Hume murder. Listener's discretion is advised. If you're a fan of horror movies or true crime, or perhaps both like myself, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, don't forget to check us out on YouTube at All Things Murder. New episodes on Thursdays. Heavenly Creatures starring Kate Winslet and Melanie Linsky is based on the notorious 1954 Parker Hume murder case in Christchurch. The film focuses on the relationship between the two teenage girls, Pauline Parker and Juliet Hume. Pauline Yvonne Parker, also known as Pauline Reaper, was born on May 26, 1938. Now, Pauline came from a working class background. Her parents were part-time house staff and gardeners employed by the University of Canterbury. Her father, Herbert Riper, and her mom, Honora Parker, were living together but were not actually married, which was like a big whoa back then. Now, Pauline attended local high school and she often found herself isolated because she had a lot of health issues. She suffered from a condition called osteomyelitis. Sorry if I totally messed this up, but it's a kind of bone infection that impacts like her arms and legs, especially in younger patients. Juliet married Hume, entered her life when they were teenagers when she, an English girl, moved with her family to New Zealand. Juliet had her own health issues. She was diagnosed with tuberculosis as a child. She briefly lived in the Caribbean and South Africa before they moved to New Zealand since doctors had advised that a warmer climate would improve her health. Like, hey, just sweat it off. Unlike Pauline, Juliet came from a comfortably middle-class background. Like, her dad was a celebrated psychiatrist, Dr. Henry Ransford Hume, one of the key scientists in the creation of the British H-bomb. Like, yeah, she was set. She was a rich girl, for sure. So obviously when these girls met, they bonded over their illness, you know, that forced them to sit out of like PE class. Like these chicks can't run the mile, ma'am. No. So they're like, what? You got issues? Me too. Besties. Once the girls got closer, Pauline and Juliet formed an elaborate fantasy life together. They would often craft stories and write to one another in their character as their creations. They revered actors and artists and even imagined their own religious system to avoid Christianity where music and art were celebrated. Both girls hoped to sell their stories to Hollywood and then they would move out there together as collaborators and besties forever. Sounds like a plan. Now, what concerned both the families was how intense this relationship was. Like, Pauline's parents were uh, really concerned that her closeness with her friend was an indicator of, hmm, she's homosexual. Which was a criminal act in New Zealand at the time, as well as being labeled a serious mental illness. Oh my god, she's gay. Get her. LGBTQ plus people could be, quote, treated for homosexuality in institutions, many as they were in many countries around the world. By this point in time, both girls were so obsessed with one another that they would become withdrawn and they would get like physically ill when they weren't around each other. Like, yeah, you two need to stop being friends. This is a weird friendship. Eventually, after Juliet's parents separated, her dad resigned from his job as the university rector, and it was decided that Juliet was going to go live in South Africa with her relatives for her health. Interesting. Really think the other girls can all let her go? <laughs> think again, sir. Both girls were really heartbroken over their upcoming separation. So Pauline decided that, hey, I'm going to go to South Africa too. Yeah, you're going, I'm going. They thought that Humes would agree to this plan. Like, no, yeah, can be an addiction for our daughter. Absolutely. But the major impediment to this dream they decided was Pauline's mother, Honora, the murder. On the afternoon of June 22nd, 1954, Pauline and Juliet accompanied her mom, Honora Parker, on a walk through Victoria Park. In a wooded area, a hundred meters or so around the main path, the girls killed her mom, bludging her to death with half of a brick encased in an old silk stocking. After finishing the deed, the girls then fled to a nearby tea kiosk where they had eaten with Honora only minutes before. Both of the girls are covered in blood. They told the shop owners that Pauline's mother 
had fallen and hit her head. Like, hey, don't look at her. You know, we didn't beat her with a brick or anything. It did not take long for this story to fall apart because police soon discovered the murder weapon in the woods nearby. Lesson one, get rid of it somewhere where the police don't find it. Major lacerations were found around her head, her neck, her face, and then had minor injuries to her fingers that a fall could not do. Guys, that was not a good lie at all. The media and frenzy erupted from the moment this case was made public. The newspaper made note of the grotesque evidence discovered in the girls' diaries, as well as their supposed lesbian passions. The trial was a sensational affair, with speculation about the girls' possible lesbianism and insanity. Because apparently, if you're gay, you're crazy. Pauline and Juliet were convicted on August 28, 1954, and as they were too young to be considered for the death penalty, each spent five years in prison. Now, had these girls been found not guilty by reason of insanity, the chances are that they would have been incarcerated indefinitely in a psychiatric hospital. And one of the most common treatments at the time for being gay was a prefrontal lobotomy. Both spent five years in prison before being released to live under new identities, still under the watchful eye of the New Zealand justice system. Like, you're free to go, but we are so watching you. After her release from prison, Juliet spent time in England and then the United States. She later ended up settling in Scotland and became a successful historical detective novelist under her new name, Anne Perry. After she was released, Pauline Parker became a devout Roman Catholic and spent time running a writing school for children. Her sister said she lives a near reclusive life, not unlike a nun, and that Pauline, quote, committed the most terrible crime and has spent 40 years repaying it by keeping away from people and doing her own little thing. In March of 2006, Juliet Holmes slash Ann Perry stated that while her relationship with Pauline was obsessive, they were not lesbians. We were not lesbians, even though it kind of seemed like it. We're not. Juliet Hume slash Ann Perry died on April 10th of 2023 at the age of 84. So pretty darn recently. And that is the true story of the Parker Hume murder. Thank you all so much for joining me. I'm Marissa Blackwood. And don't forget to tune in next week for a new All Things Murder, if you dare. Mm -hmm.